Hello, third graders, it's Mrs. Belatesh, and today we're gonna continue talking about water. Now, I have a great big drop of water on the board here, and the reason water has this shape is that there's two things happening to this water drop. Number one, gravity is pulling the water drop down, like, like a raindrop being pulled to the earth. But there's something else happening with this water drop. There's something called surface tension. We saw that last week when we saw the bead of the water on top of the wax paper. So the surface tension, all of the water molecules in this drop of water are holding hands. They are making a nice like skin on that drop of water. And that skin, those water molecules holding hands, is called surface tension. And that's why a drop of water looks like this. Gravity's pulling it down, but the water molecules are holding on tight and creating surface tension. Last week, we saw that we had different materials and different materials interact with water in different ways. Wax paper and aluminum foil, the water beads up. It does not absorb. So those materials are waterproof. Uh, the paper towel, tissues, toilet paper, all of those things absorb the water. They are not waterproof, right? Boys and girls, please get out your science notebook and I want you to get this page, soaking sponges. Now, I'm gonna do an experiment and as I go along with the experiment, I want you to fill out this page. I just talked about how wax paper is waterproof and the <clears throat> paper towels are absorbent. And those materials are designed to be like that so that we can use them for specific tasks. So a sponge is designed to be absorbent. And my question is, how much water can a sponge absorb? So in order to find this out, what I need to do is I need to measure how heavy this sponge is that's completely dry, then soak it in water, and then measure what it weighs afterwards. So we can do a little math problem and find out the mass of the water. So here's my sponge. Before I weigh it, before I put it on the scale, can you guys just estimate how many grams do you think that this uh, of mass is in this sponge? Okay, I'm gonna see. I'm gonna put my, my uh, sponge on this side. It doesn't really even fit in the cup. Okay, there we go. And I'm gonna put the gram pieces on the other side. So I'd say it is nine grams. I'm gonna measure, I'm gonna call, look at the, the mass exactly. So here's nine grams. I put the sponge in a container of water and now it is absorbing or soaking up the water. And now I'm gonna let it kind of drip because I don't want to have excess water. I just want to have the most water that it will absorb without having excess. So the extra water that's dripping out, I don't want it in. Okay, I let the water drip, drip, drip out until there was only the water that was still in the sponge. I didn't squeeze it out. I just let the extra water drip out that was gonna be pulled by gravity. Now I'm gonna put the gram pieces on the other side. Okay, I think that is balanced. Now I'm gonna see the mass of the uh, water. 20, 40, 60, one. So that's the mass of the water and the sponge. But I just want to know what was the mass of the water? How can we find that out? So this is how I would do this problem. I know the mass of the sponge and the water. I measured it. At the end, it was 61 grams. I also know the mass of just the sponge. It, I measured it. It was nine grams. I can do a math problem. I can subtract the mass of the sponge from the sponge and water. And when I do that, 
I will get the mass of just the water. So the mass of the water is 52 grams. Okay, so let's go over the answers in on this sheet. So the mass of the dry sponge was nine grams. Make a guess. So I needed you guys to make your own guess about what, how much you think it would be able to soak up. The mass of the soaked sponge was 61 grams. The math problem was 61 grams minus nine grams equals 52 grams. How many times the mass of the sponge is the mass of the water? So you have to think nine grams, that's the mass of the sponge, nine times what equals 52 grams? So this is not gonna be exact. So can you estimate about what it might be? I said nine times six, because nine times six is 54, and 52 is just below 54. Okay, and were you surprised by the mass of water that your sponge could pick up? Why or why not? And I said no, because sponges are designed to absorb water. But you could say yes, however you, what you're feeling. Third graders, we just finished talking about soaking up sponges. Now I want to talk a little bit about volume. We've been talking about mass, right? Mass, we use a balance scale and we measure how heavy things are by using grams. But when we want to measure how much space something takes up, we call it volume. So volume is how much space something takes up. Now, in the United States, we use cups, pints, quarts, and gallons. And we're kind of backwards that way. But I want to just illustrate how we measure using those units. So I have a cup measurement here. And I just have some green water so you can see it better. And I can pour it, the water into the measuring cup. And when I reach the top, that is one cup of water, okay? And it's the amount, right? It's the volume of water, one cup of water. Now I have a larger container and this is one quart. It contains four cups of water. So if I take, that's one cup, I'm gonna add another cup of water up to the measuring line. Two cups is the same as one pint. Okay, so now I've got two cups of green water and that's the same as one pint. Four cups equals one quart. I'm gonna add another cup, so that would give me three cups. That's three cups, and one more cup will give me four cups, or one quart of water. Now, there are four quarts in a gallon, so I would need to have four of these and put it into a container, and that would be one gallon. This pitcher is a half gallon, okay? So I could put two of these in, two of these containers in here, and it would be one half gallon. But in science, we don't use cups, pints, quarts, or gallons. We use liters. I believe all of you got one of these. This is a graduated cylinder and it is measured in milliliters. Milliliter. There are 1,000 milliliters in one liter. So this is a graduated cylinder and I can take this green water, which is, this is about a half a gallon. I can pour it in here. It's a liquid, so it pours and flows. And that is 50 milliliters. I can pour that into my liter container. 
And you can see it's just a very small amount. Now, this is one liter. And I can take my water and I can pour it in. And it's going to go all the way up to one liter. That's one liter of water. So let's compare it to four cups. This is one liter, and you can see it looks almost the same as four cups. I'm going to pour my liter into the four cups and see how it compares. So it is just a little bit more than four cups. So if we want to measure just a very small quantity of a liquid, we can use a graduated cylinder, and that would show me that it's milliliters. This is a liter, and if I have a really large quantity of liquid that I want to measure, I can use a kiloliter, which is 1,000 liters. So now you are moving into the Thanksgiving break and you might be doing a lot of cooking. You might be helping your parents do some cooking for Thanksgiving dinner. You might be measuring things. Pay attention. Do you use cups? Do you use liters? What unit of measurement are you going to be using? And if you're cooking something, it will tell you the temperature that you need to set your oven at or how hot your stove should be. We're gonna be talking about temperature next time. All right, Cougars, have a great Thanksgiving break. See you next time.